In this first chapter of Media Essentials by Richard Campbell, Christopher Martin, Bettina Fabos, and Sean Harmson, we will start by discussing the evolution of mass communication through five eras. At their best, mass media help us understand the world around us. At their worst, they can distort our worldview and erode our quality of life. Because media has such a tremendous impact, both good and bad, this course is designed to provide you with media literacy, an understanding of the media and their powerful influence on the world. Only by being media literate can we become critical consumers and engaged participants who accept part of the responsibility for the shape and direction of media culture. When we talk about mass media, what we're talking about are the industries that create and distribute media to the masses like songs, books, newspapers, movies, internet services, TV shows, magazines, and things that haven't even been invented yet, as well as the channels of communication. The historical development of media can be traced through five eras. In the oral and written eras, media existed only in tribal or feudal communities and in agricultural economies. In the print, electronic, and digital era, Media became vehicles for mass communication, the creation and use of symbols to convey information and meaning to large and diverse audiences. As we'll learn, older forms of communication don't really go away, but instead are adapted and converged or joined together with newer forms and technologies. In most early societies, Information and knowledge circulated through oral or spoken traditions, passed on by poets, teachers, and tribal storytellers. As alphabets and the written word emerged, a manuscript or written culture developed to overshadow oral communication. Manuscripts were painstakingly transcribed by hand by philosophers, monks, and stenographers. They were often commissioned by members of the ruling class to record religious works and prayers, literature and personal chronicles. The working class, many of whom were illiterate, rarely even saw manuscripts. As a result, the shift from oral to written communication created an economic and educational gap between the rulers and those they ruled. The invention of the printing press in the mid 1400s by German goldsmith Johannes Gutenberg ushered in the modern print era. Printing presses and the publications they produced began to spread across Europe in the late 1400s and early 1500s. As with modern mass media, it took a while for books to catch on. Early volumes were large, elaborate and expensive and primarily purchased by the same wealthy and powerful people who purchased manuscripts. Wealthy aristocrats, royal families, church leaders, prominent merchants, and powerful politicians. As the years went on, printers reduced the size and cost of books to make them the first mass-marketed product. The mass production of books had four distinct impacts on culture. First, as mass-produced printed materials could spread information and ideas faster and farther than ever before, Writers could use print media to disseminate viewpoints that challenge civic doctrine and religious authority, ultimately paving the way for major social and cultural changes like the 16th century Protestant Reformation. The mass production of books foreshadowed the mass production of other goods, which led to the Industrial Revolution in the 18th and 19th centuries. That, in turn, led to the development of a middle class, a new group of people who were neither poor laborers nor wealthy political or religious leaders. As more books became available, literacy rates rose among the working and middle classes. When Gutenberg invented the printing press, only about 30% of European adults could read. In the 200 years since the development of the printing press, literacy rates climbed to 47%, and then up to 62% after another 200 years. Finally, 
the print revolution fostered the idea of individualism. People no longer had to rely solely on their local communities and commercial, religious, and political leaders for guidance on how to live their lives. Instead, they could read arguments and ideas and form their own conclusions. The electronic era of mass communication started with the telegraph in the 1840s, which, using a series of dots and dashes called Morse code, allowed for the instantaneous transmission of a message rather than relying on stagecoaches, ships, or the Pony Express. The telegraph enables military, business, and political leaders to coordinate operations more easily, and it laid the groundwork for future technological developments like wireless telegraphy, the fax machine, and cellular telephone. The development of film in the late 1800s and the advent of radio in the 1920s were important milestones in the electronic era, but it really took off with the arrival of television in the 1950s and 1960s. As with books before them, radio and television helped develop a sense of shared national identity as news, sports, and entertainment was broadcast coast to coast in the United States. The electronic era gave way to the digital era, with cutting edge communication gadgetry like laptops, cable TV, email, DVDs, DVRs, and smartphones. In digital communication, images and sounds are encoded into electronical signals and then decoded as a precise representation of a TV picture, magazine article, or voice on the other end of a phone. Each new form of mass media leads to powerful changes in how people consume information and entertainment. But recently, we've experienced a digital turn, a shift in media use and consumption from the emergence of the internet. Unlike its predecessors in mass media, the internet is an aggregator, allowing media to come together in one space to be easily shared. The concept of media convergence is one of the defining characteristics of the digital turn, but the term itself has two distinct meanings. First, it refers to the technological merging of content across media channels. You used to be able to listen to a radio program once, live on the radio, but now you can listen to the radio at your computer via the station's web stream or catch a podcast of the program on your phone later. Songs, TV shows, movies, books, magazines, and newspaper articles, you name it, you can find it on your computer, tablet, or cell phone. A second definition of media convergence describes a particular business model in which a company consolidates its various media holdings under one corporate umbrella. As of 2020, Comcast, for example, owns or has interest in Comcast Cable Communications, NBC Universal, Universal Studios, DreamWorks Animation, and Universal Parks and Resorts in the United States and abroad. They also own the Philadelphia Flyers NHL team, among other assets. As the semester progresses, we will continue to touch on the impact of media convergence.